Kolski, I work for Tetrade, and today I'll be talking about manipulating HTTP headers using full set of substitution formatters. But before we start talking about, start talking about manipulating HTTP headers, let's spend some time talking about access logs. So when Envoy processes transactions, I mean, receives a, a request from downstream client, selects upstream host, transmits uh, the request, then waits for the response and eventually sends it back to the client, it produces a lot of data. And the data is extremely valuable when things go wrong. You would like to know what happened, how many times Envoy retransmitted a uh, request upstream. Uh, how was the time it was waiting for the response? So the easiest way to extract the data is via access logs. So access logs basically a string representation of some data which has been produced during those transactions. And it's defined by a sequence of substitution formatters. And substitution formatter is a string which starts and ends with percentage signs and uniquely identifies the data you would like to display. So here I give an example of a couple of, uh, uh, of substitution formatters. The start time when transaction basically started. The second one is ex I would like to display a certain header from the request and the response code, which was received from, from an upstream. So now let's move to manipulating HDB headers. So there's a mechanism which has been in Envon for a while. And basically what it allows you to do is to modify the headers as they pass Envoy on the upstream uh, direction and downstream direction. And so you can manipulate request headers on the response headers. And the way to do it is via configuration. You have to specify two things. One is the name to give to the header to be added. And then also you would like to identify the value. So for identifying the value, as you see here, is uh, we use again the substitution formatter. Is a string which starts and ends with a percentage sign and identifies the value which we'd like to add as a header to that header. Um, it looks exactly like access log substitution formatter. So the question is, the natural question is, is it the same thing? Are we talking about exactly the same thing? So until now, the answer is no. Even though the nest syntax is exactly the same as you hear for access log and for header manipulation, I can use a, a substitution formatter for host name, but it has been, it's, it's processed, it's parsed, and uh, it's actually converted to a string using completely different code. Uh, that obviously is not super optimal. We do, there is a code duplication yeah, to document it into different places, testing efforts doubles. So that's from developer point of view. From user perspective, things are not much clear because uh, when you look for a specific keyword, it will be directed into different places, one for access log formatters and one for header manipulation. And to make things even more confusing for access logs, there is a set of about 80 plus formatters and for header manipulation is only about 30, which are available. And so there were questions like, uh, you know, why can why I cannot use a specific uh, substitution formatter for manipulating header? Why the same formatter is available for uh, access logs? So the answer is because the code was different. There was a different parser and there were different implementation of the, of the um, formatter itself. So starting with release 124, things become much more unified. So the same parser is used both for access log, the same for header manipulation and the same implementation of the substitution formatter. And the substitution formatter I mean, by substitution formatter I mean uh, the co code which takes data and converts it into the string. There will be some little bit differences as you see on the for access log and header manipulation for the code and for a test, but they mostly are uh, limited towards processing the uh, configuration because access log is defined in a different way than, than header manipulation. That code, it must be, has to be different and testing routines are also different. 
for the user, things become much more easier too because uh, it, all those uh, substitution formatters are defined only in a, documented only in one place. And whenever you look for a specific keyword, there will be only one result. So you may say, hey, that's great. So whenever I can use the access log uh, formatter, I can also use it to manipulate the headers. But the answer is no. And the difference between why one can be used in access log and one cannot be used into the header manipulator is in timing when data is created. So for access logs, access logs are created when transaction finishes. So Envoy received the request from the client, selected upstream, sent the request, waited for response, and then transmitted to the downstream. And then access log is created. And as you see, at that moment, all the data, all data related to the transactions is already available because the event which happened in the past. But that's not true for manipulating the headers. So for example, here, I would like to manipulate the request headers, right? But the only data which is available to display at this moment or to use is related to client's connection, downstream client connection to Envoy and actually sending the request itself. All the other things like, you know, selecting upstream, sending, waiting for response, those are future events. They has not happened yet. So using that, uh, using um, formatters which relate to those events doesn't really make sense. And here is an example, right? Um, we try to manipulate the request headers, but the formatter relates to event in the future. I would like to get some data from response, which obviously doesn't happen yet. So in those cases, you can still put them, but the, the result will, uh, the result produced by a formatter would be empty string. So things are a little bit better, you know, when modifying response headers, mostly because it's more data is available, data related to upstream connection, which host has been selected, uh, whether the connection was TLS, how many times Envoy tried to reach uh, upstream, um, you know, um, then the time waited for the response, all those things are available right now. So here I give an example of upstream request attempt. I would like to put into a header how many times Envoy tried to reach upstream. Uh, but certain data is still not available. The data which is related to a future event, I mean, transmitting a uh, response to the client. So here is an example of the byte sent. How many bytes are sent back, Envoy sends back to, um, to the client. This is his future event and it does not produce uh, the value which, which we expect. So as a final thought, I would like to present a use case which was not possible to do in, uh, prior to release 124. So there is a network of a mesh network of, uh, of envoys and they select next hop based on a random algorithm. And I would like the user to know which part has been taken. Um, so in order to do it, each envoy has to be configured with manipulating response headers by adding his own name on top of whatever was received from upstream. And as a response prog you know, progresses from upstream to downstream, each envoy adds its own name. So here, when the client eventually gets it, it's easy to identify the path. Every time I send it, it might be a different path. Super easy to debug. All right, that's all. Thank you very much.